Hello everybody, I'm in Storm here, and welcome to part two of the Stellaris tutorial. In the previous episode, we went over the basic user interface and some beginning setup, like uh, building some things on the home planet, which we queued up a, uh, a hydroponic farm there, and setting up uh, the first technology research that we will do at the beginning of the game. So what we're gonna be doing here is kind of go over more of what we're gonna be doing at the beginning of the game, for the first steps of our new empire. And actually, I'm pausing the game and starting to play a little bit. So, first thing we wanna do at the beginning of pretty much every single Stellaris game is take a look at your science ship. Science ships are extraordinarily important uh, for developing your empire. What we're gonna do is we're gonna zoom out to the galaxy map and we're just gonna right click on our home system here and say survey system. And what that is gonna do is order the science ship to hop around all the different bodies in the system and survey them to let us know what resources might be there and if there are any anomalies that we can research. So we're gonna be doing that. The next thing we're gonna do is start exploring our local neighborhood. And we're gonna do that using our military fleet right here. And these guys can't survey or anything, but they can at least hop around and make sure there isn't anything surprising or we don't want any nasty surprises um, as we begin to venture out from our home system so I'm gonna right click on this system right here and they're gonna start to move now a couple of things to talk about here on the galaxy map there is this green dashed ring which represents our current sensor range which means everything in there we can see on our sensors uh, so we can detect ships and sort of, and other things like that. Now, this yellow dashed ring is something special regarding the FTL method. FTL is the fast and the light travel method that we are using, which we currently use what are called wormhole stations. So we have this structure right here, which is a wormhole station. Now, there are three different methods of fast and light travel that are are possible in the game. The first is warp drive. Warp drive allows you to fly just directly uh, from system to system as long as your ships actually have enough range to get there uh, before they have to recharge their warp drive. Warp drive is nice because it allows uh, freedom of movement, um, complete freedom of movement, uh, so long as you know you can get to the system you're trying to get to. But the problem is it's a little slow. It has long cooldowns between warp jumps and you actually have to move across the map. So it takes some time. The second option is hyperlanes, which we don't actually see yet because we don't have that technology. What that is is you'll see these lines between different systems and those lines dictate the paths that your ships are limited to travel. Uh, so you are restricted on hyperlanes, but the advantage of hyperlanes is they're very fast. Cooldowns are quick and uh, jumps are pretty much instantaneous between systems. But again, you are limited in where you can move. Now, what we are using are wormhole stations. Wormhole stations allow you to instantaneously transfer from one system to another, but it uses a wormhole. Now, the caveat to that is that one end of the wormhole must always connect to a wormhole station. So we will demonstrate that here in a moment. So let's actually take a look at our military ships and let's actually unpause the game by pressing the space bar. You also have controls here where you can click the pause and play the game. You have speed controls here to go faster or slower. Uh, or you can use the plus and minus keys on your numpad. So here we go. Let's pause it. So right now the wormhole is opening. It's going to open in 14 days and jump our ships from here to the other system. So let's go ahead and watch that happen. We can see the entering wormhole.
and boom, we are now instantaneously transferred to that system. But let's say I want to fly from here to here. If I right click, you see that it has this particular path because we, we said that one end of the wormhole always has to go to a wormhole station. So we have to transfer from here to here to the station and then from the station to our destination. So while it's fast, it's dependent on the structure of the wormhole network. And, we, and this is the maximum range that the wormhole can jump us. So if I wanted to say go over here, we can't. It's X'd out, we can't go that far. If we wanted to go that far, what I have to do is take a construction ship. Actually, let's fly the construction ship out to this system here. Ah, here we go. Here's an event. The hunt for the hyacinth. The hyacinth, one of the chrysanthemum sister ship, was meant to arrive in our local star cluster three years after our ancestors came here from Earth. This is part of the, the story of our race. Their mission was either to either support our colony or establish a new one depending on the situation they arrived in. The Ark ship failed to make contact with Unity, assuming it even left Earth in the first place. In the event that the Hyacinth did make it to our galactic neighborhood, it might be a good idea to search nearby systems. And we could say, yes, do it. Or we can say, no. But we're going to go ahead and say, yes. Begins the hunt for the Hyacinth event chain. Situation log updated. And now we got an alert that the situation log has been updated. The situation log is this right here, which is now glowing. Click on that, we now have this event here. And we have an option to track it on map. And we track it on map, it pings several locations here for us. And actually, that kind of gives me a way to demonstrate this here. So I was sending the construction ship over there. I'm gonna change my mind. I'm gonna send it over here. Because that's as far as we can go. We can't get to those systems. Alright, so let's go ahead and unpause it. Alright, so now my military fleet's here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just keep telling them to go to places that we don't... We can't see. So this is unknown. Unknown, unknown. Alright, and now... One other thing to talk about here is the science ship is working on the surveys. So they just completed survey of something. So we just surveyed the star and there's a little marker here. It says three and it says, this is the marker for energy credits. See, matches this thing here. So what that means is that if we build a station, basically a mining station around the star, it will collect three energy credits per month. And then it's gonna continue to work on the rest of these let's just bump the speed up a little bit and see if there's any other resources all right so now my construction ship has arrived at this uh, system here and we need to find a way to get over to these systems because they have part of that event that we're looking on so let me pause it for a second and then click on this system and then what i can do is i can tell this guy to build a wormhole station. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna build a wormhole station right there. And he's gonna start working on that. It's building pretty quick. And what that will do is provide a new wormhole station and extend our range. And as we can see here, this bar shows the construction, construction progress. Complete. Yep, there we go. Finished this construction key, which we see an alert up here. Let's us know we can actually click on that and it'll bring up that planet's surface directly to allow us to see what else we can do. So I think I want to build something else. And what we're going to build is this Auto Cathon Monument. And what it does is it gives us two unity. It's gonna be pretty important to get early in the game. So we're gonna build that. And right now we have a new pop 
as you can see, it's kind of faded out here a little bit. And you got a blue bar. That's a new pop that's growing. And actually, what I want to do is I'm going to move it. I'm going to click it and drag it over here. I want it to be on that structure instead. All right, the wormhole station construction is done. All right, so now we can see that the extents of our wormhole network have changed. So if I want to say I want this fleet to hop out to this system, it can now jump directly to here and then go to here. You can use that as a relay, essentially. Uh, looks like we've got some more resources here. So this is engineering research. This is minerals. System survey complete. The Deneb system has been fully surveyed. Okay, so our system has been fully surveyed. So what I actually want to do is send this out. Now let me see here. We're going to... Now, one other thing I haven't talked about yet is these little markers right here. This marker here means that there's a potentially habitable planet in the in this system here and it tells us that it's a continental world but we don't really know what it is yet so we're gonna take our science ship and i'm gonna right click there and say survey that system so they're gonna jump over there and begin surveying that system all right so our first strike force has entered here and there's nothing there there appears to be no no hostiles here either. Let me just jump over there real quick. As you can see, they move pretty quick. Oh, here we go, an anomaly. All right, let's pause the game. So, our science ship has detected an anomaly on a planet, and it says we have detected life signs coming from somewhere beneath the barren and lifeless surface of this moon. If we click on that, it'll zoom us over there. So they're scanning this moon. And the question is, what manner of organism could this possibly be? It tells us it's an anomaly level, anomaly level of 1, and has a failure risk of 20%. So there's a 20% chance that the anomaly, that the research will fail. But we're going to go ahead and say, research it. So the science ship will go ahead and start working on that. They retain their um, survey orders. Complete. They just do this first. All right, now the construction ship, let's go ahead and let's fly them back to Deneb. And as you can see, we can actually directly hop from one um, wormhole station to another. All right, so there's nothing here. So let's say this. I want to take our military fleet. I want to fly over here. And as you can see, with the wormhole stations, it's going to jump back to the closest one, jump down the chain of uh, wormhole stations until it can get out to that spot. It, some, it makes sense you know, as you start to use it. All right. The anomaly has been researched. Some kind of burrowing silicon-based life form inhabits a vast network of tunnels beneath the barren surface of Ascaron 7 or 6A. As best we can tell, the creatures feed off rocks and there is evidence to suggest that they possess a rudimentary form of intelligence. Their tunneling efforts have shuffled large amounts of valuable minerals to the surface. So that means we get a plus three mineral modifier on that moon. So that's nice. There were previously was no resources on that moon, but with the successful completion of the anomaly research, it actually gave us resources on that moon. Now, our construction ship is back here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to build something. Contact report, deep space dwellers. The Commonwealth of Man is abuzz with news of alien organisms encountered by the CNS Wanderer which is the name of the science ship, some time ago. Seemingly native to deep space, they make the extremophile creatures of unity appear frail by comparison. All 
All right, so construction ship. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click on the star and say build a mining station. So I'm gonna go ahead and build a mining station. Now it costs 90 minerals to build that mining station. So we can see that our minerals dropped off. All right, Zoltar's Maw is the name of this black hole. Okay, so I'm gonna continue to have these guys hop around. We're gonna head over there. Sofer, Science Officer Florencia Ruiz, Ruiz, has leveled up again to trade carefree. Okay, so the scientist aboard this science ship has gained experience as a result of working on the surveys and the anomaly and has leveled up to two stars and gained an ability, carefree, which is this one which increases the anomaly research speed by 35%. So that's nice. I'm just checking, there is no timer, because sometimes some of these uh, missions are timed and will tell you how many days you have down here. Oh, another potentially habitable planet, a tropical world. All right, let's go fly over there. Now, another thing about the wormhole stations, I'm kind of talking about them a lot, but they are the most complicated and hardest FTL travel to use in yet and you know, but they're also one of the more powerful ones because you can move extremely fast see they're already there across you know, large empires is that each wormhole station can only open up a sing one wormhole at a time oh what's this another anomaly this is anomaly level three which is a little bit above uh, her level, and it's a 40% failure risk. A small rectangular object on the surface of this moon is deflecting all scanning beams like a mirror. Our sensors are unable to determine its material composition. Go ahead. I could change the scientist, but don't have any other scientists. So we'll go ahead and research that. It's a high risk of failure, but uh, we'll give that a shot. So as I was saying, is each wormhole station can only open up a single wormhole at a time. So if there are multiple fleets trying to use, or multiple fleets or multiple ships, you know, because each one of these single ships is considered a fleet, um, trying to use the wormhole at the same time, they will queue up. So sometimes you'll be sitting there wondering, like, why is a fleet not moving? And it's because they're sitting on, you know, a long queue of other ships trying to use the same wormhole. Ah, here we go. Our anomaly uh, research has failed. Despite repeated attempts, Science Officer Florencia Ruiz and the rest of the crew of the CNS Wanderer were unable to locate the reflecting object that was reported in the initial survey of Etzgaron 8A. Perhaps it was just a sensor glitch. Unfortunate. So that got yeah, us nothing. There is some anomalies that can provide catastrophic failures, which could destroy your entire ship and kill your scientists. Well, those aren't fun. The Erasian Concordat. Ah, here's another event chain. Let's come up. We have recovered artifacts from an ancient alien civilization on Etzgaron 8. From what we have translated so far of their language, we have learned that these aliens called themselves the Erasian Concordat. They were an interstellar power that held sway over this region of the galaxy a little over a million years ago. They appear to have been six-limbed mammalians, and there are several references to some sort of plague called the Javorian Pox, which swept across their empire with devastating results, possibly leading to their extinction. Interesting. Begins the Precursors, Erasians event chain. There are several different types of precursor civilizations that you can discover. The Erasians are one of them, and they were the ones that were attacked by this Javorian pox. Which is why they're no longer here. Now... 
Administration on Unity received Science Officer Florencia Ruiz's report on alien remnants with some apprehension. The leave. The leavings in question are now widely considered to be definitive proof of unknown forces once having been active in the galaxy through some prominent though some prominent human thinkers reject this in favor of identifying the traces as freak geological formations or results of curious natural phenomena i think that's because we are xenophobic right we're xenophobic so uh, our nation's reaction to those sorts of things can be different depending on whether you're xenophobic or xenophilic or system just kind of neutral complete. all right so we completed the survey of that system so what i'm actually going to do is take this science ship i can actually click on this icon here as well and order them over there situation log updated and we just encountered something we've encountered some form of alien vessels in the Deneb system. They just flew into our home system. These strange objects have been flagged as Alpha Spooks. Until we can learn more about them, we should proceed with caution. Unity is in uproar following the news of unidentified ships sighted in the void. Their intentions unknown. It would be prudent to assume the worst. Alright, so let's go take a look at them. Can we see them? They're over here. Ah. Some form of space based life form. So, what we can do is we can go over here into the situation log and we now see investigate the alpha spooks. It takes 10 months to finish. So, we go ahead and research them. Now, what that's actually going to do is it's going to take our society researcher because it requires society points. If we look at this, it costs 60 society research. So they're actually going to take her off this project to complete that first. So that's something to think about. But investigating any new species um, usually is pretty important. Alright, so you guys, let's just continue having them hop around a little bit. Now we have 17 months till this is done. 29 months till that's done. I think one thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to build a mining station there. So it'll improve our resource collection rate of our minerals. Eventually, eventually, you'll have so many resources that you just need to right click and just say build everything in there. Um, but right now we don't have that much, so we, uh, we have to do them one at a time. Alright, so. What I'm going to have you do is I'm going to have you survey that system. Because that's one of the systems for the hunt for the hyacinth so we need to survey all of these systems and as you can see down here it lets us know the jomar civilization encountered interesting we have detected the presence of a pre-space alien civilization on iplib viba flav in the Teneca system. There is evidence that they have harnessed the power of the atom and nuclear weapons may be prolific among their many divided nation states. The possibility of a sudden self-inflicted extinction event is high. We should consider building an observation post above their world to study them more closely. Interesting. So, that's actually good to have found here. This is a pre-space flight civilization on this planet. Oh, and we just got something else we need to take a look at, too. And so, this is a pre-space flight civilization of different species. So they don't know about us yet. And there's going to be some interesting things we can probably do there. Construction complete. But right now, we got an alert. We have a couple alerts. So that mining station just finished, which is what this is. 
I can right-click on that to dismiss it. This is an inactive building. It lets us know that there's a building on one of our planets that is not being used right now. So we know about that. And this is alert to let us know that we have a tradition available. So we can pick one of these traditions to use. And they're different ones here. I think what we're going to do is we're going to go with expansion, which as you can see gives us different options. Colonization fever, capital buildings produce one addition unity, reach for the stars, which helps with frontier outposts. We'll go over those soon. Yeah, so we're actually going to click adopt. And when we adopt it, we all new colonies will start with one additional pop. So yeah, we'll go ahead and do that. So Actually, can I build that observation post? In fact, I can build that observation post. Let's go ahead and build that observation post. Alpha Spooks has three months left. I do that from time to time. I'll just leave the game paused and think that it's actually running. I'm just going to kick it up to the, the highest speed right now, just so that we can kind of get through some things. So what I'd like to do is kind of go over establishing our first colony. Alright. Anomaly found. Uh, there are signs of activity by an ancient precursor civilization on this in, in, in hospitable rock. It's level 1 and it's 10% failure risk. Go ahead and research it. Okay, so this special project is completed with the Alpha Spooks. The spaceborne life forms, which the human head of society research has come, up, come to refer to as Tianki, are docile creatures capable of accessing some lower dimension of subspace. They roam from system to system with remarkable ease. They graze on gases common to the upper layers of many gas giants. It is highly likely, to say the least, that this is their only food source, but intake of other nutrients is yet to be observed. They will rarely, rarely, if ever, attack, even when provoked. They can safely be ignored. All right, so we get some uh, research available, frequency tuning. Failure. We actually failed that 10% risk. The signs of Rassian activity in the vicinity of Teneca 4 turned out to be false leads. Science officer Florencia Ruiz has asked to continue the search with the Cenus Wanderer elsewhere. Unfortunate. Construction complete. System survey complete. All right, system survey. Scans from the Cenus Wanderer have re revealed no traces of the hyacinth. In the Teneca system, perhaps we will have better luck in one of the other systems. Okay, so this is complete. We're going to send you out here to survey one of those other event systems. And now we have an observation post. So, if we go over here, we have built an observation post. We have some options here. We click on that. So, right now we have passive observation which the natives are studied unknowingly from a safe distance and every effort is made to avoid cultural contamination. It gives us three society research. Now, because we have certain op, you know, certain govern, governing ethics and civics and stuff, um, and a government type, we can actually do this, which is aggressive observation. The natives are aggressively studied and live specimens are frequently collected to learn as much as possible about their biology and culture. It gives us six society research. I'm actually going to switch over to that. Now, there are two options other here, which I can't do right now. Technological enlightenment. An effort is made to rapidly elevate the native civilization to the space age. The time it takes is dependent on their current level of technology. 
so we can actually, you know, contact them and bring them up to space, you know, like our level of tech. Um, so they become a space uh, capable civilization. There's also covert infiltration. Our agents are genetically modified to appear as members of the native population and sent to infiltrate their society. They will gradually replace world leaders and prepare the planet for annexation by us. This complex operation is only worthwhile on industrial civilizations. When complete the mission, we'll annex the planet and give the natives a large but temporary happiness boost. But we need the gene tra tailoring technology, which we don't have, so we can't do that yet. Okay. So we're gonna fly that construction ship back to our home system. Now what I'm probably gonna do is go ahead and end this episode here. And what I'll try to do is get to the point where we can establish a colony. Um, what we can do is actually we can head over here. We can click on this planet. And go over planet summary. There's a button here that says colonize. It costs 30 influence. We have plenty of influence. So if we click on that, it'll give us the surface of the planet we want to colonize. And we have a list of the planets where we have... Um, pops that we can use to colonize with. So if we open this up, it shows us that we have humans on this planet and we can build the colony ship, but it requires 311 more minerals, which we are going to be taking a while at 11 per month to get. So I'll try and get to that point. So we'll end this here. We'll come back to the next part of this. We'll kind of go over establishing a colony and, uh, and see what else that we can go over. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Go ahead, like, subscribe, and comment, and I will see you next time.